The Chinese don't have to go to Paris anymore. It's come to them. This is the district of Tianju Cheng in Xijiang province. A bizarre mix of Parisian townhouses, fountains from the Palace of Versailles, and an Eiffel Tower clone, a third the size of the original. It's an incongruous scene, a place where China's aspirations and traditions collide. You speak French? My name is Petra. You speak French? Yes, you speak French. It's very interesting. But just like my French, this architectural clone has gone badly wrong. On Champs-Élysées Square, just about every shop stands abandoned. These shops are people who come to the shop. At the beginning, the people who live are very few. We have to live in the shop. We have to live in the shop. We have to live in the shop. Tianju Cheng is proving popular with wedding photographers. But the Parisian vibe hasn't quite proved to be the attraction it was meant to be. 10,000 people were supposed to live here. Today, the population's a tenth of that. At a local noodle bar, I find Wu Xixing serving up the lunchtime noodles. She's tried to make a go of it for the last year and a half, but is worried about how long her business can stay afloat. It's possible, of course, that more people will move in and the shops will reopen. But for now, Tianju Cheng is another of China's ghost cities. On it goes, every shop empty, boarded up, amazing. In the southern city of Dongguan, I've returned to the vast and crumbling South China Mall. It claims to be the world's biggest shopping center. It's also the emptiest. Nothing has changed in the two and a half years since I was last in the Great Mall of China. I last reported from here in 2011. Back then I found toy shop owner Tianyu Gao trying desperately to make a go of it. Do you get very lonely in here? When was the last time you sold something? Today, Mr. Tian's old shop is boarded up. He didn't survive. But the shopping center could yet prosper. The local government has taken over, classifying it as a national tourist attraction. Billions of dollars are being spent on a makeover that includes a massive apartment and villa complex. The aim is to turn this miserable mall into a new town. It's a build, build, build mentality that has some high-ranking officials concerned. Mm -hmm. 
Li Tai heads the country's top economic planning agency. For such an influential figure, his language is refreshingly frank. For the ultimate display of rampant and unchecked urbanization, I've come to Inner Mongolia. That's a whole city over there, isn't it? To the city of Kangbashi in the sprawling district of Ordos. 8.30 a.m. Peak hour on the main road into China's largest and most infamous ghost city. In the middle of a mining boom, developers were given free reign here. This is where Genghis Khan meets Alice in Wonderland. Complete with a yellow brick road to nowhere. People may be at a premium here, but space is not. When the short-lived mining boom went to bust, the influx of new residents never came. Designed to accommodate a million residents, today the population is reportedly less than 70,000. Driving around this city is an eerie and unsettling experience. Everywhere apartments stand empty, office blocks remain half-finished, and the cranes are idle. I think the problem in Ordos is that things just took off and they went completely crazy. Author Tom Miller has written a book on China's urban explosion and why places like Ordos have failed. The kinds of population pressures Ordos imagined, imagined they would have have not come to pass. And so, yes, in Ordos, there's going to be an awful lot of waste. When you travel around China, as I have done, and you see all these empty apartment blocks, you know, houses that haven't been lived in, are we seeing the signs of a, of a property bubble that's beginning to burst? And I think there are certainly bubbles within China, but the point is that China's a very, very large country and it's, it doesn't make sense to talk about a single bubble. I think it's, imagine China as bubble wrap. Some of those bubbles within it might burst, but in places like, say, Beijing and Shanghai, there's still massive, massive demand for housing and there isn't enough housing. It's the area's lack of people that, ironically, is drawing in the visitors. Some have come a long way to see for themselves the emptiest city in the world's most populated country. Those tourists. Hello. Hi. Where are you from? From Iraq. From Iraq? Yeah. What about you? Uh, from Australia. It'll be a while before the tourists come here, though. 850 kilometers south of Ordos, they're building another city from scratch. In Gansu province, in China's arid west, Langzhou New Area is taking shape. It's a project that began with military precision just two years ago, when army engineers cut the tops of 700 mountains and filled in the valleys. And this is what they're building. A 130,000 hectare metropolis. This project is all part of China's ambitious goal to move more than 400 million people from the countryside to the city in the next 10 years. It is perhaps only China that could contemplate something on this almost unimaginable scale. Since the turn of the century, China's urban population has grown by a mind-boggling 220 million people. The government is gambling that cities that are empty now will in time start to fill up. 
If you travel around China, you will find lots of empty places, and if you come back five years later, you'll find that they filled up. And this is this is a standard pattern um, of um, of uh, development um, in China, and it's very very different from the way development works in almost any other country in the world. Thank you very much for inviting us to your new city. <laughs> Gu Jiang is Lanzhou New Area's deputy mayor. He insists his city will not make the same mistakes as Ordos. Lanzhou City, it will absolutely not be turned into a city, a city, a city. One is what? A very good functioning, very powerful, very powerful city. One is a very beautiful city. One is a very beautiful city. So, it can raise the quality of our lives. 我们的生老百姓的生活水平。The foundations of a new life are taking shape by the day. Lanzhou will soon become home for thousands of rural migrants from the city's sprawling hinterland. This one is just our that the whole this the Liu Di Zhihui Jin Rong Cheng, ah, the whole this the project of the Yixi area, the one five percent of the land. 另外，高层住宅呢，主要是满足这个、这个、这个大量的，就是这个刚性需求啊，需要来这去居住，在新区创业、置业啊，在这需要居住的人群。Before we left Lanzhou, the deputy mayor had some people he wanted us to meet. We've been invited here by the local government, and they're basically organising all of our interviews. Now we're being taken to meet some local farmers who are having to leave their land. To make way for this new city. <laughs> These farmers have had no say in their relocation, but with government minders in earshot, all insist they're glad to be moving. <laughs> <laughs> For men who've worked the fields much of their lives, the big challenge will be to find work in the city. I suppose, in a way, it's not difficult to see why uh, these people are happy to move, but it's always hard to know whether they're saying what they really mean when you've got government minders all around you. And look here, you can see the demolition work has already begun. And soon, all this will be one vast construction site. I asked to see one of the next houses on the demolition list and quickly discovered it was only built 10 years ago. What's wrong with this? This seems all right. Why does it have to be knocked down? But there are a lot of farmers the house like this. And yet they're going to be knocked yes, down? Yes, ah. yes. For the owner, the gain of a new apartment will mean losing his family home. So, will your apartment be bigger than this? Across China, millions more are making the move from the country to the city. It's social engineering on the grandest of scales. <laughs> 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 <laughs>